Thank you very much. First of all, I share with my colleagues uh, the gratefulness and the appreciation of His Excellency President Rajab Dayab Ardogan and the government and the people of Turkey for providing this space for the of diplomacy to address the challenges of diplomacy globally. Next, I do agree with what my colleague said in terms of diplomacy. Diplomacy is a why. But I, for the sake of time, let me take three important things in diplomacy. One is, as you rightly said, history has a great contribution in the diplomacy, but sometimes some of the histories are not helpful mm. and they have to be not forgotten, but has to be transformed and changed that history into a one that can be uh, adjusted with the current situations of the ground. I come from a part in the world, a Horn of Africa in the African continent, which is a very, very volatile, very strategic, very dynamic region in, in the continent of Africa. And uh, that region has a centuries and centuries, millennia of history with many parts of the world when you go back. So the case is some of those histories are not helpful. In diplomacy of today in that region, in particular, what I believe to focus is, as you rightly said, pragmatism. But sometimes it's very difficult to, to be a pragmatic because there are web of interests that one has to manage when managing the diplomacy, when you're dealing with the diplomatic issues. As the president of Kosovo said, in Somalia, we have a recent, past, recent history of very difficult one. State collapse, civil war, terrorism in place, climate effects that has been devastating as well. All these have created an environment where Somalia needs support from the outside world. The world has supported Somalia in big time. But again, all the partners that have been supporting Somalia, some of which have different interests in the region, some has different principles and diplomacy, as it now said, is based on certain principles. So some of your partners, when they have a divergent principles that can, that very difficult to converge them together into your own interest and the interest of the, is very difficult. In my country, we have been in a very difficult situation, as I said, civil war, state collapse, civil war, transitional period, as the president of Kosovo now said, we have almost 12 years of transitional period supported by regional bodies, uh, continental bodies, the United Nations global bodies, like that. But later on, we finish that transition and we become a non-transitional government. I was lucky enough to be the first non-transitional leader in Somalia in 2012. And then elections, because of respecting the principles of democracy, I left office when I lost the election. I came back last year uh, in 2022 again, and this is my second time that I'm leading the country. Yes, the United Nations, the African Union, and many international partners have provided Somalia space to breathe, space to organize the state building challenges and issues, space to bring the Somalis together to have a common purpose when it comes to state building. In the meantime, there was a terrorist group that denies all those rights of our people to be a modern democratic state in place. So what I'm focusing now right is that how to manage the diplomatic space within Somalia, within the region that we are part. We are part of IGAD as a regional organization. We are part of African Union as a continental, continental and We are part of East Africa community as a regional. So all these regional organizations, continental organizations, besides the global organization, need some sort of space to manage. With all this diplomat diplomacy complexity that we are managing, again, we are fighting with an international terrorist organization that has been manning Somalia for the last 16 years, 17 years. So 
The issue now here is pragmatism is very important. Balancing the conflicting or divergent interests of your friends, your partners is another one. But the most important thing is those partners, particularly when you are dealing with your regional issues in 21st century, what the world has agreed diplomatically, respecting the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, the political independence of each and every country, which is enshrined in all charters, in all uh, 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 principles, international law. Sometimes this is not respected as it was supposed to be by addressing some national interests or uh, individual countries' interests, there is a compromise. Again, what is necessary uh, here I'm seeing is that we need to review the global diplomacy structures that are in place, the rules and the principles that control the international diplomacy based on the international law. How can we make all those challenges look into a legal base that is compatible with the 21st century's challenges, including the climate change and everything? Recently, Somalia is facing a crisis, not multiple crises, of course, fighting with terrorism, addressing the uh, climate change issues, uh, managing the diplomatic space for all those partners that we have uh, in a post-conflict environment in a very child, fragile state situation, fragile state institutions that are running the country, is that when a, an, a neighbor or a, another country does not want to deal with you, with the country, with the national institutions of the country, because of minor interests minor individual personal interests that that country has or the leadership of that country has just to get uh, famous or just to see that uh, unilaterally can address the challenges. Recently, our neighbor Ethiopia has signed an agreement with the local administration of my country. So that is, you know, a direct violation of those uh, sacred principles uh, of uh, respecting the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, and the political independence of, uh, of the individual countries. In such cases, denying the rights of sovereignty to a neighboring country is the beginning of a, of a crisis. And that crisis is still standing on. So when it comes to military, the military always serves the diplomacy. But the diplomacy is the first. If we make it the other way around and put the cart in front of the horse and say we use military to solve the diplomatic issues is another, another, another challenge that the 21st century countries are facing. Again, uh, first of all, if I come to your question that the kind of terrorists we are dealing with, they are Number one, uh, Al-Qaeda affiliate, and they have a global agenda. They don't have a local agenda. When they don't have a local agenda, very difficult to, to negotiate or to deal with a diplomatic way with them because they, they don't have a local agenda. If they want to change the country and the interest in the, in the good of the society, and they have a political agenda that makes Somalia a better place to live, whatever, however it's extreme that idea even is, you can negotiate with them. But when they want Somalia to be a, a launching bot for a global uh, problems that are, has nothing to do with Somalia, that's the biggest problem. When they invite all the uh, outlawers of the world into Somalia so that they can organize to disrupt other nations very far away from Somalia, different continents and so this is where we are right now. Uh, Somalia right now is facing the challenge of, as I said earlier, the climate change is a big issue for Somalia. 
We have a four consecutive droughts, and the fifth year was a year with floods because of the climate change, El Nino effect and all this. We, before that, there was a famine uh, caused by the droughts, and we averted that famine. Now we are dealing with the uh, climate change, the El Nino effect. There were African Union peacekeeping forces in Somalia for the last 17 years, and uh, we are very much grateful for that mission because they provided space for the Somali state to work and build its own institutions and bring the Somali people together. But every mission has an end. That mission is going to end this year, December this year. So Somalia is facing the challenge of taking the full responsibility of the security of the country when the mission left and the terrorists are still fighting. That's number one. And then we still are in the process of building the state. State building process is also going on, which is another challenge to provide a space for dialogue among the local actors and all this. With all those multiple, multiple challenges, when a neighboring country again does that, intervene the, the local domestic politics, sensitize the people to, to go against the whole process of state building and all this, encouraging them to secede from Somalia and that they will recognize as an independent state if they secede from Somalia, and uh, then threatening Somalia that they will send their military and take over. And what they are claiming is that we have an agreement with regional authorities, so and so to build base, military base inside Somali territory. So all these are the challenges. We have a history, long term, six, seven hundred years of history with our neighbor, Ethiopia. Most of this history was not a good history. We've decided to change that history. The past is past learn from the past, move forward, and we were open for a diplomatic dialogue, economic integration, political aid. Unfortunately, when the leaders have internal problems and they want to divert the attention of the local people to outside problems, it's a very serious problem. Ethiopian leadership is diverting their internal problems to outside so that the people say we will recognize this region and we will get access to the sea. There are a large number of countries in the world who are landlocked but all of them they have access to the sea and there are universally accepted standards how the landlocked countries access to the sea. That does not mean by annexing a country or taking te territory from them or establishing a military basis inside. That's the only way we can access to the sea. This is what our neighbor is claiming, which is not, uh, which is not very, very valuable. Now, here I want to say is the world. The world, sometimes we need to differentiate between the people and difficulty leaders. If we punish a country because they have bad leaders who are not, who doesn't believe the modern way, the civilized way of dealing problems, every conflict we know that when it end, it will end up one day. How long it takes, how many people will suffer, all this. But at the end, it will end with a diplomatic solution. Okay. So a preventive diplomacy, why can't we strengthen globally to prevent such disasters before it happens, rather than going after it and uh, negotiating Gaza's problem, Palestine's problem, decades and decades and decades of suffering. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure one day, I don't know whether it's going to be tomorrow or the next century, but it will end one day in a diplomatic agreement and diplomatic manner. We certainly hope so. We uh, hope so, and it will. That uh, unfortunately, with millions it's so of the First right World now. War and Second World War, it all ended yeah, up with Yeah, it did. It yeah. did, after mass destruction. But, uh, you know, you bring up access to the Red Sea, and this is actually, I mean, access to the sea. You're on the Red Sea. Uh, this is a question that uh, applies to actually every leader here. Mm -hmm. It sounds to many like a far-off region, the Red Sea, but right now it is affecting every economy, really, on this planet because we are watching the United States and the United Kingdom actually bomb Houthi targets. 
Now, the Houthis were given, for example, they gave, rather, an ultimatum to say, United States, Israel, UK, call a ceasefire in Gaza. We will not disrupt trade in the Red Sea. That ultimatum was not met. Mm -hmm. We are all playing, paying a price in some ways in global trade and the instability now in the Horn of Africa. And I'm I, wondering where Somalia stands on this issue because, well, and I'll ask the rest of you to go yeah, ahead. Well, the, you, you're right to say, but the issue of the Red Sea uh, is a global issue. It's a very strategic location that affects the lives of millions of people which are living very far away from the Red Sea. That's one. Uh, and the issue of the Houthis now is not access to the sea. The challenge we are having with our neighbor Ethiopia is an access to the sea. Mm. All we are saying is that, yes, it's our own interest in the landlocked countries to come and have an access. Sure, I was making the point that actually no one has access to the sea right now because the routes have been closed That's by this action. And no one has access to the sea because of this multiple problem, problem of Gaza, problem of Yemen, all these are standing problems that needs diplomacy to be resolved diplomatically. Otherwise, it will affect it like mm. that. For us, we are there. We are not part of what's going on, uh, but we are the victims. Okay. Economically, we are the, the container that leaves Turkey and reaches Somalia in three weeks' time. Today is reaching Somalia months, four months three months, four months. Yeah. So it's affecting us. We are victims for the Red Sea case, but our case with Ethiopia is completely different. Okay.